as Duquesne is about ready to take on Rhode Island in the first of a doubleheader here at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. The next game will include Richmond and Dayton. It's been an exciting two days already here in Atlantic City. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined courtside by Steve Wolf. It certainly has been exciting these first two days. And speaking of exciting, the last time these two teams faced each other during the regular season, it was a two-point ball game. Now, normally it would be Jimmy Barron that would lead the way offensively for Rhode Island. But in actuality, it was Keith Cochran and Kaheem Seawright. Well, this is a well-balanced team, and a team, if they make a run in this tournament, should be in the NCAAs. And these two guys were 17 for 29 from the field. Very, very tough to defend them. Now, Jimmy Barrett did have 13 points in that ball game, but he is the sharpshooter for Rhode Island. Hey, Tom, every time I see this kid play, he gets better. He continues to scoot back. He's shooting from the hash mark. He's an unbelievable three-point shooter. He's second in the conference at three-point field goal percentage, and he's a guy that needs to have a better game than he had the first time these two teams met. Not only that, but he's also established himself as the best three-point shooter in the history of the Atlantic 10. Now, Jimmy Barron was in the conversation for player of the year in the A-10. Aaron Jackson of Duquesne, he didn't get into the conversation until the midway point of the season. Look at those numbers. 18.3 points per game, shooting nearly 35% from three-point land, nearly six rebounds, nearly six assists. He has had an outstanding senior season. Tom, he's so versatile. He can pretty much do anything. That six assist is so deceiving because he's such a good scorer. But he gets down in transition, and he distributes the ball so well. You have to guard him. you got to come out on him, and he's able to give the ball to guys in positions to score. He's just a great player. Well, he is the only senior scholarship winner for the Duquesne Dukes. He should have a big game and a big tournament. Well, Duquesne, they are young, they are energetic, and they can shoot, which is what Ron Everhart likes about him. Meanwhile, for Rhode Island, Jimmy Barron's got to have a good night. We'll see if he does. The lineups in the tip coming up next. Welcome to Lecom, a place where students prepare themselves, not just for a career, but a calling. A place dedicated to the science of healing and a passion for caring, where future doctors learn to partner with their patients. A place where medicine is connected to a greater purpose. LECOM. Prepare yourself. Hi, I'm Dick Burke, owner of DB Homes. Welcome to our new model home on Eisenhower Boulevard. Are you considering investing in a new home? Let DB Homes make your dream home a reality. We are an Energy Star builder and our homes can be customized to fit your needs and budget. Our company offers flexibility throughout the entire process with many owner builder options and in much less time than traditional stick built homes. We hope you'll stop by and tour our new model home. Build your home on a solid foundation with DB Homes. Do you want to know about severe weather? Turn to Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Chief Meteorologist Julie Bologna. Our advanced technology allows us to spot systems farther away. Track storms down to your neighborhood so you can keep your family safe. Severe Weather Team 11. It's not just a name, it's what we do. Accurate, clear, easy to understand. Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Severe weather coverage you can count on. Atlantic City, New Jersey, it's game three here on day two. Duquesne against the Rhode Island Rams. First two games were pretty good in their own right. Two teams have already advanced to the semifinal round, and now Ron Everhart would like to see his Duquesne squad advance to the semifinal round. He's done a great job three years. He has 46 wins, 43 losses. And let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Geico. First for the Duquesne Dukes. Now, Aaron Jackson leads the way, no doubt for Duquesne, but they are young and they've got an awful lot of talent behind Aaron Jackson. You see Jason Duty's part of that backcourt, but then you got Bill Clark, Melquan Bolding had a great day yesterday, and Damian Saunders as well. That threesome is going to be a headache for the 8-10 for, the, for their rest of their career. Now for the Rhode Island Rams, the lineup's brought to you by Geico. Marquise Jones, he's the point guard. He needs to have a good game. And on the flip side, Jimmy Barron, who you see there to the left, Kaheem Seawright, who you see there to the right, they have to have good scoring games for Rhode Island to be successful. And Jim Barron, the coach of the year in the Atlantic 10, he is in his eighth season at Rhode Island. He has 130 wins, a four-time now coach of the year. And I thought that was a pretty good race between Jim Barron and the guy he's going up against tonight, Ron Everhart. You took the words right out of my mouth. I think that Everhart, in three years he's been at Duquesne, he's had tough years. 
you know, a lot of guys leaving, whether they're going to the NBA or transferring or graduating, and now he's got a young squad. The officials for today's game, you saw DJ Karstensen's name up top. He is the tall, slender fella who is about ready to head towards center court, throw the ball up, and we're about ready to get underway. Whoop! Got a little false start there. That happens from time to time. And now we are underway, and Rhode Island will control the tip. And Duquesne, man-to-man -man defense right off the bat. And, Steve, we won't see much more than man-to-man -man defense by the Dukes this entire game. They get at it. The one thing that they have to continue doing is being consistent throughout the whole game defensively. There's Duquesne forcing the first turnover of the night. They'll do that often. The style that Ron Everhart has put in place has produced an average of 78 and a half points per game. Now, Rhode Island is averaging a little more than 80 points per game. And you might say, there's going to be a lot of points scored in this ball game. But you know what? Rhode Island might go into more of a half-court set than this run-and-gun set that they normally are used to. Well, I think with the size of some of their players, they'd rather not get it into an up-and-down game. Shot clock at four. Clark releases. No good. The rebound by Seawright. He's one of the best in the A-10 in pulling down rebounds. Just saw Rhode Island's record, 23-9 and nine on the year. They have won six of seven. They, along with Richmond, the hottest teams, really, in the A-10. As that ball is tipped out of bounds, and it remains Rhode Island ball. And that last game, though, they were six. They won six in a row before losing to UMass on that last second shot. Really let one get away. They had a chance to capture the, t the A-10 title. They were tied with Xavier. Xavier ended up losing that night to Richmond. Well, Chris Lowe with his bucket. He went from end to end to score the game winner for UMass. UMass has been eliminated from this tournament already. They were eliminated by Duquesne yesterday. Shot clock winds down toward 10. No score, just underway. Butterflies for both squads. Marquise Jones to see right. Takes a glimpse at the shot clock and gets off his first shot of the night. And Ulmer's going to be fouled going up with that second chance opportunity. Right now, Rhode Island has a size advantage. And when the ball goes up, if you're Duquesne, you have to make sure you get a body on somebody. You cannot give this Rhode Island team second sh chances at the basket. That's a great move, too, by Seawright. A good pump fake. Got Saunders going the other way. Well, the foul is called on Duquesne's Jason Duty. It's his first, team's first, as Ulmer cans the first free throw of the night. Lamont Ulmer, a 77% free throw shooter. Second shot is good. So 2-0 Rhode Island on top of the early going. So Duquesne with the ball. Jackson trying to draw the defense in. What you see Jackson do a lot is dribble penetration and kick. Dribble penetration and kick. So Clark's going to get shots. Duty's going to get shots. And then if he doesn't kick, he's taking it all the way. Aaron Jackson, as we mentioned before, the only senior who has a scholarship on this squad. The drive by Saunders, the block by Ulmer. Almost had a pretty good two minutes so far. You know, it's usually Keith Cothran that finds himself as being the initiator, energizer for the Rhode Island Rams, and Ulmer's had a good start. Marquise Jones open for three. No good. Rebound by Bill Clark. Clark is averaging nearly five rebounds per game. He's just a sophomore. Look at the ball handling skills for Jackson. Clark with the drive and the kick to Saunders. This team is so good at finding the open man. Everybody can dribble, penetrate in, and kick. And that's just a really nice pass for an easy layup. So a 2-2 game. Two and a half gone by here in the first half. Ulmer has the ball knocked out of bounds. Let's keep it playing. Bop, bop, bop. Tom, the one thing that Duquesne does well, everybody penetrates. You see, it's coming in the middle. Nice pass to Saunders and laying it in. Jones inbounds to Jimmy Barron. Martell has really established himself as a decent big man in this Atlantic 10. First shot by Barron was a bank attempt. No good. Here comes Jackson in transition. Ooh, the kickback in the three attempt. No good and good rebound by Ulmer. So a lot of action so far and some turnovers. Nice move by Saunders. The bounce pass to Jackson and a finish. This is not the tempo that Jim Barron needs his team to run up and down the court like this. They need to slow it up a little bit. Duquesne will push you and press you into moving up and down the court very quickly. But you have to have some restraint. Now, when you buy into that kind of style, 
I mean, guys think that they can play up and down, and I think Rhode Island can, but in reality, the game plan is probably that the Rams want to play more of a half-court offensive set. But when you when you get into that rhythm, is it tough to get out of that rhythm? Well, I think it is. It's one of those things where you get emotional, you're running up and down the court, you got a sweat going, you know, and it becomes a playground game. The guy, I, I think that Jones needs to make sure he gets these guys under control. And if Jones doesn't do it, Barron has to take control. The guards have to run this offense for Rhode Island. Duty's better, be, duty better get across the divisional line. Jackson does with a second to spare. Clark for three, left corner, no good. Saunders with the offensive rebound and the putback. Right now, Duquesne is spreading out Rhode Island so far that they're not able to box out and get rebounds. And Saunders has snuck in there to get an easy chippy. Duquesne comes in as the number seven seed of this tournament. Rhode Island, the number two seed. Jones to Martell. And that's what a point guard needs to do. Great recognition. Well, Rhode Island has this size. There's nobody that really can match up against Martell. Good dribble drive by Jones. Get an easy basket. A little pressure by Rhode Island. Separation by Duquesne. And a block by Seawright. Barron in the open floor. He can shoot it from that distance. It might sound surprising, but he can. Smart move by Barron. Instead of going all the way in, he brought it back out, setting up the offense. You got the size, you want to look inside. Saunders with the pickup of Marquise Jones on the switch. So Martell is being covered by Jackson. They recognize the mismatch and the easy bucket for Will Martell. That is exactly the game plan. To get the ball inside, to see right in Martell. Jason Duty, first shot of the night for him. No good. The rebound is tipped. Saunders with another offensive board and an athletic reverse. That's two now for Saunders. Easy baskets going straight to the basket. Just hustle plays. Saunders with six points so far. Duquesne leads it eight to six. Under 15 minutes to play first half. Here's Jackson bringing it up the floor. Jackson with a nice move to get some separation. And things clog up just a little bit. Jackson, as we mentioned before, is averaging 18.3 points per game. Fires a three, and it's good. And he's got a very odd shot. And I say that, he comes back and over his shoulder before he releases. He cocks it back there. It looks like a gun. It pulls it back and flings it. In the city summer league, he was the MVP of the summer league with a lot of good players. Guys from Pittsburgh, Dewan Blair. Levance Fields, who's an outstanding point guard, could be one of the best in the country for Pittsburgh. Aaron Jackson took home the, the hardware. Jimmy Barron, long range three, and it's good. Well, his range is Philadelphia when it comes to this area of the world. I mean, he can shoot from three, four, five steps behind the arc. Well, he takes good shots. I mean, and that's why it's so important to make sure that you understand what your role is. Jimmy Barron continues to get better. He can drive, but he has that nice, smooth jump shot. 346 career threes for Jimmy Barron. It's the most in A-10 history. Last year, Darnell Harris of LaSalle established the new record, and it lasted just a year. And a block down low by Saunders, but Martell fights his way to get the putback to go. Will Martell, in the early part of this game, has six points. Jackson to Duty. And it's good. Jason Duty from way downtown makes it a three-point lead for the Dukes. That was all set up by Jackson, Jackson's penetration to the basket. Duty, a former walk-on, really didn't want to try out for the team, but Coach Everhart told him, hey, you'll play if you come out. All the problems that Ron Everhart had during his first year, he needed players, and Duty was a thousand-point scorer in high school. He had started a band. We've talked about this story before. He was a guitarist and lead singer in that band, and that was part of his concentration in college. But when the Dukes needed some players, he decided to toss aside the guitar for the time being and decided to pick up the basketball again. Got his haircut, clean cut player playing for Coach Everhart, and he's really helped this team out this year. Shot clock under 10. Clark with the drive and the steal by Seawright. Shot clock at 2 and a steal by Barron. Three-point lead for Duquesne. 12-15 and counting. Left to play here in the first half. Jones with the feed to Ullman. Martell able to hang on to that ball. Barron wide open for three, and it's good! Jimmy Barron with two threes in this first half. And like any good shooter, when the stroke starts to go, 
and starts to go in a positive way, it'll keep on rolling. And how about Saunders with a beautiful drive to the basket? He'll get a free throw when we return. Duquesne with a two-point lead. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. All right, sports fans, it's time to find Geico's number one fan. Tonight's winner will receive Geico t-shirts, hats, and an upgrade to courtside seats, and could star in a real Geico commercial. Let's see who it's going to be. It looks like we have a winner. Yes, we do, folks. How about that? Congratulations. And remember, saving money at Geico.com. So easy, a caveman can do it. So you've won your first big tournament. Now what? Stock up for the next one. It's the final days of the Bass Pro Shop Spring Fishing Classic, our biggest sale of the year. Don't miss these one-day only specials. Thursday, save 65% on Cordell Super Spots. And Friday, the XPS Dual Purpose 150 battery is only $69.94. Your total comes to $123.52. Cheat to me means greatness. Go to the gym, uh, I sweat, uh, I feel pain. Getting hit by a truck, ending up in a wheelchair, going back and doing the Iron Man three times. It's what gets you up at 6 a.m. when no one else is awake because you want to be better than anyone else out there. Give it your all and never give up. I'm willing to pull every muscle in my body to get the job done. Always trying to be better, each and every day. Finding yourself through movement. That's G. Sports Video Library of all time. Introducing the new NCAA.com, the official site of college sports. Watch Bracket Breakdown presented by Bass Pro Shops immediately following the CBS NCAA selection show Sunday at 7. Welcome to ba Boardwalk Hall, Duquesne over Rhode Island, 16 to 14. And what happens when you try to press against Duquesne's defense? You make bad passes, and then Duquesne will just kill you. They have four fast break points. Those two coming off a turnover. You got to make sure you get the ball into the hands of the guard and set up your offense. I don't know about you, Steve, but Damian Saunders is going to go to the free throw line here to try to finish off a three-point play. We saw him distribute that bucket. And he's got eight points already. He's four for four from the floor, but he also has a couple of rebounds, a couple of steals. He's had a very good start to this game. He only averages 13 points a game. He's almost at his average in the first nine minutes. There's Clark fighting for the offensive rebound. Jackson with a nice quick move to the baseline. That ball goes out of bounds off his foot. And Aaron Jackson is saying that Kaheem Seawright touched it last. 16-14, Duquesne is on top of Rhode Island for a right to move on to the semifinals of the Atlantic 10 tournament. Duquesne University Basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Not everyone's as forgiving as Nationwide Insurance. <laughs> That's why Nationwide Insurance offers accident forgiveness. Your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Nationwide is on your side. Hi, I'm Walter Page. I'm about to tell you something you already know. That a better mattress leads to better sleep and a better quality of life. Before you take dramatic steps to change your sleep, consider the science that says your first consideration should be a new mattress. At Page Bedding, you get more mattress for less money in every price range. Need a premium set? You will find savings at every comfort level. Your hometown mattress manufacturer offering the highest quality and service at the lowest price. At Page Bedding, you really can see the difference with your eyes closed. Rechargeable battery myth number 18. Old rechargeable batteries make great gifts. The reality is that old rechargeable batteries can and should be recycled. Visit calltorecycle.org or call toll-free to learn more. If it's rechargeable, it's recyclable. To learn more, visit drugfree.org. 
Well, the Rhodey Nation has made its way down to Atlantic City, New Jersey for the Atlantic 10 tournament. Duquesne leads at 16-14, 11-49 to play here in the first half. And, you know, this has been a great venue for the Atlantic 10 to hold their A-10 tournament. The contract is up uh, after this year. And this place, which opened originally in 1926, is unbelievably scenic. When, uh, under, underwent $90 million in renovations several years ago, and it was placed onto the National Registry as a historical landmark back in 1987. You just saw the ceilings there, 137 feet high. This place has held Miss America pageants, now basketball, wrestling matches, concerts. And the fans here are watching Duquesne's defense really turn it up against this Rhode Island offense. See what Duquesne has done offensively. They started three of nine, but they've only missed one of their last five shots. They lead it by two with the ball. We head toward the 11-minute mark here in the first half. Xavier and Temple have already advanced to the semifinal. To the, the two top seeds in the earlier games moved on. Shot clock at five. Clark from the free throw line with the shot clock at three. He loses the ball right into the hands of Kaheem Seawright. Here's Stephen Mejia. Delroy James may have got away with a walk. Seawright underneath, and he's able to get that bucket to go down. Sixth man of the year, Delroy James, doing a nice job of getting in the lane and making an assist inside. Well, this is already our fifth tie. Each team with three turnovers in this first half. Nice find underneath, Melquan Bolding, who had a good night last night with 23 points and 13 rebounds, gets his first points of the evening. Cothran totally lost track of where he was. You gotta make sure you know where the ball is in, the in your defense, especially against a team like Duquesne. See right fouled going up, so he'll get a couple of free throws. We'll see who the foul's against. Looks like it's against Aaron Jackson. You see right here. Duquesne playing a zone defense. Gets a nice pass inside. See right taking it strong to the basket. When you're playing it against a zone or even a loose man to man, you really got to get the ball in that area, middle area. You have either side. It gives you really good balance. You can look inside, weak side. See the numbers on C Ray for the year for the free throw line is a 68% shooter. Missed three throws there. Right to the ball game. Is Eric Evans for Duquesne, freshman out of Detroit, Michigan. His head coach in high school, Steve Hall, is one of the assistant coaches for Ron Everhart. Pretty good package that Ron Everhart was able to get. That was the second shot for Seawright. And it's good. So nearly halfway done with this first half. 18-17 the score. Evans. Running the point, at least for the moment, for Duquesne, with Aaron Jackson as the off guard. That's the good thing about Jackson, is he can not only play the point, but he also can play the two guard position. And there's an illegal screen called on Damian Saunders. That's his first personal foul. You know, sometimes when you're playing pick and roll games, a lot of times the man with the ball is not setting up. He's not setting up the pick, and the pick moves to try to get closer to the dribbler. That is really the dribbler's fault, not the picker. You also have to see what kind of officiating you have going when you play that sort of pick and roll game. Another turnover forced by Duquesne. You know, a lot of officials let things go. Some don't, some do. Well, I, I think the moving of the pick and trying to put the chicken wing, your elbow yeah. out, to try to make sure that you get the set the good pick. And a lot of times it's not the picker's fault. Evans, boy, he looked like he was losing control of that ball and he got it to go with his left hand. The two little guys, the freshman here. And Evans going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Here's Barron for three. Good! And Jimmy Barron knocked it to the scores table after converting his third three of the first half. I don't know how long Duquesne will stay in that zone if Jimmy Barron gets open looks like that because he's in one of those zones right now. Nine points, three of four shooting. Whistle blows and a foul called on Mejia with Evans driving to the hoop. Well, one, I always wonder when teams Mejia. play Rhode Island if the zone is just there for show because Jim Barron, the head coach for Rhode Island, he knows that, you know, it's not often that you have a weapon like his son that can just shoot over any zone. Well, I mean, it's interesting. If you don't have good ball movement, you don't get the ball in his hands, uh, he's useless. And I think that also 
if you do extend on him on the zone, right. you know, he may have a game like he did the first time these two teams played. He only had 13 points. Evans with the ball in front of the Rhode Island bench. Left-handed shooter takes a long three. Nice box out by Seawright. And Seawright in the early going. Has a couple rebounds, three points, and travel called on Delroy James. James, whose brother Sean played for Duquesne last year. His mom and Sean's mom, when these two teams faced each other up in Rhode Island, and Jim Barron knows this because it was up at the Ryan Center. That was kind of tough for her to get a chance to see both of her sons playing on opposite ends of the floor. Sean James was an outstanding talent. He, he could block some These shots, but good. I, th I think he made a mistake leaving early, but he, he was a great shot blocker. Offensive foul called on Aaron Jackson. That's his second. Now, it's a decision for Ron Everhart whether he keeps him in the ballgame or not. Well, this is a move that you have to understand who you're playing against. And when you watch film, you can see that Aaron Jackson does lean in. So it was a good defensive play, but also a little acting. You get that call. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron Jackson's a big call for this team. Once Mejia felt the, the contact, he just fell right back, but it was the right move on his part. Absolutely. Under eight minutes to play, see right in the paint. No, look, pass down low to Delroy James in a two-handed slam. I'm not sure what was more impressive, the pass or the slam. Well, I think that was a great pass by C. Wright, not even looking. James cutting to the basket. I think he was looking at you and I. I know you were ready for the pass. 22-20 the score. Tried to get my hands up. <laughs> Bill Clark backs his way in. Strong move, but it wasn't until his second shot that he was able to get it to go. This is why this Duquesne team is so tough. They're relentless. They get down, and James slams, dunks, an inside play. They come down the other end, and they retaliate, get right back into it. Already the seventh tie of this ball game as we head toward the seven-minute mark here in the first half. Seawright, fadeaway jumper. He had a good look with James with the rebound. They're going to call him for a travel. So it will be Duquesne ball. Game tied at 22. Seawright can score, but also, look at this. He can pass as well. The finish by Delroy James. considering investing in a new home? Let DB Homes make your dream home a reality. We are an Energy Star builder and our homes can be customized to fit your needs and budget. Our company offers flexibility throughout the entire process with many owner builder options and in much less time than traditional stick built homes. We hope you'll stop by and tour our new model home. Build your home on a solid foundation with DB Homes. For that better night's sleep, there's only one place to shop and get deals like these. No need to wait one more night for that better night's sleep. Page Bedding offers quick, free in-home delivery and free removal of your old bedding on all mattress set purposes. Now we're introducing our signature line of mattress sets, Page Perfect Morning. All Page Perfect Morning sets have the industry's highest quality coils with various comfort layers that provide five distinct feels. Your hometown mattress manufacturer offering the highest quality and service at the lowest price. At Page Bedding, you really can see the difference with your eyes closed. Hey, this is only the quarterfinal round of the Atlantic 10 tournament. The basketball championship continues this weekend here in AC. And if you don't have your tickets yet, go to the Boardwalk Hall ticket office or call Ticketmaster. And be sure to visit AtlanticCityNJ.com for all the latest information about tickets, discounts, and the fan zone. That's AtlanticCityNJ.com. Well, Rhode Island with a little different tact in this first half, a little zone for the Rams. Well, they're, they're really playing the matchup. Dylan, man to man, is switching up top. But you'll see right here that you've got to get the ball right in this area here. Either it's by pass or dribble penetration. And then you can, you're able to break down their defense. Instead, they're settling for the outside jump shot. Really got to get the ball in the middle. You're right. That did look more like a matchup. Early on, they were playing basically a straight zone. Well, they were switching up top. It could be a matchup man-to-man, -man, a little bit of a junk defense. But uh, 
you know, I think that both teams have to get the ball in the middle and they have to get some penetration to the basket. 22 all, seven minutes to play here in the first half. The winner advances to the semifinal tomorrow night, and the winner will take on the winner of our next game, which is Richmond and Dayton. Saunders with a drive against Martell, and a foul on Will Martell. And that's exactly what you have to do. When you have a matchup like that, Saunders on Martell, Saunders a lot smaller but a lot quicker. He just goes right around him. So Duquesne spread the offense. Dribble drive by Saunders for an easy two. Damian Saunders, the sophomore from Waterbury, Connecticut. He went to Notre Dame Prep. Now that is the same high school that produced as Martell goes to the bench for Rhode Island. Same high school that produced the likes of Derek Character, Michael Beasley to prep school. But also on the other end of the floor for Rhode Island, Lamont Homer went to Rhode Island prep. Bill Clark with another offensive rebound. Here's Clark, thought about a long-range three. Balding's not shy, he'll take it. And a rebound by Delroy James. Rhode Island, seven assists on eight field goals, really being efficient, sharing the basketball. And not only from their guards, but also we saw with Team C. Wright. Delroy James had that ball blocked away by the smaller Eric Evans. Whistle blows and a travel called on Keith Cothran. And you know that was against Jackson, who's got two fouls. Really good defense, but you got to really be careful if you're Aaron Jackson. Can ill afford to have him come out of the game. Just saw Jim Barron, the head coach of Rhode Island. What a job he did with this club this season. He got his coaching career at St. Francis of Pennsylvania. Then went to St. Bonaventure, his alma mater, before heading over to Rhode Island. And a blocking foul called on Delroy James. That's the first on James. Just the 14th foul for Rhode Island. The difference here, you see a little bit of the push-up. James was not there. Mejia was there before against Evans, but... The other thing, too, Saunders really didn't put his arm out, which is what we saw earlier. Jack actually, it was Jackson driving in there. Jackson, yeah, he's like a, a freight train going through those lanes. Yeah, he's bigger this year, and I thought about this when I saw him play earlier this season against St. Joseph's and Temple. He's bigger this year than he was last year. Clark for three. Nope, it's a two. The officials might want to take a look at that. DJ Karstensen, who's the referee, signal two. But Jeff Clark, who you see right there, he's going to put the headset on. And he wants to take a look and see where the feet were. I, it was tough for me to even tell. And it was, you know, about 20 feet in front of us. We'll see right here. Clark going in there. Well, that's, a, that's a tough, that's a tough uh, angle to look at it. Yeah, Clark is saying that it was a three. But why not? See where his this left foot is. Okay. Yep. Still this one right here you have a problem with. The left foot was behind the line. I'm not sure about the right one. Yeah, the left foot was shielding the right foot. Maybe we'll get a better look at this angle. Left foot's down. Clearly down. Boy, that you know what? That's that's tough. That's tough. I think they should put a center in the floor. If he's on the line and <laughs> some light goes on with tennis. We'll see where the score is. I think they need him a two. And, and I'll tell you the reason why. It looked like, even though it was a shadow, that right foot was really close to the line. Very tough to tell. Jeff Clark, I think, did the right thing, though, by asking for the replay. So with that, Bill Clark gets a two-point field goal instead of a three, and Duquesne has to settle for a four-point lead. See what Rhode Island's done over its last seven possessions, four TOs. Ben Eves, the transfer from UConn in the ball game for Rhode Island. Here's Mejia. Nice matchup size-wise for Evans. Barron to catch in the shoot. It's short, and Clark pulls down the rebound. That's the sixth rebound for Bill Clark. Four points, six rebounds. Evans forcing the action. Why not? Getting down there before Rhode Island has a chance to set up in their defense. I'll tell you what, he is not shy at all. Oh, Eves for three. It's long. Rebound, Cothran, and the easy putback. Duquesne getting caught, trying to get out in transition. Forgot to grab the basketball. Easy stick back. So five minutes now to play. First half, 28-24. Duquesne leads it. Each team is shooting 50% or better from the floor. Clark forcing the action. And Eves called for the foul. And Bill Clark 
will get two free throws. Now, I'm impressed, maybe because I'm offensive-minded, that each team is at 50% or more. But it might mean something else. Yeah, it's either really, really good offense or very poor defense. Knowing <laughs> <laughs> no no the way you are, I, I think the coaches are thinking, man, yeah. i got to stop that penetration in the lane and get out on Barron on his jump shots. And there I am thinking, all right, get to 100 points. Why not? It's fun for it's fun for the audience, but uh, it kills coaches. Clark makes the first free throw, gives uh, Duquesne a five-point lead. A mass substitution for Rhode Island. There's Almer checks back in. Marquise Jones comes in. Seawright comes back in. You know, Tom, when you watch this Duquesne team, the reason why they're so tough to defend is everybody on the perimeter, Bolding, Clark, Jackson, all of them, Evans, can take it to the basket off the dribble. And it's very hard to keep in front of these guys. And when you do stop them, they kick it out for an open jump shot. Well, there's no doubt that Ron Everhart, in his third year, has recruited his kind of player. And it was during his first season with Duquesne where he instituted this style that he first learned as an assistant coach at Tulane under Perry Clark. C right. Seven foot jumper, no good. Nice put back by Eves, though. He got that right hand up over on top of everybody and just tipped it in. Another offensive stick back. 29-26 the score. Balding hangs in the air. Clark with the save. Got Eves off the ground. And he's got a smirk on his face. Clark does because he did that on purpose. You see Eves going out and trying to retrieve the ball. And it's interesting to see that Bolton now taking to the basket. Eves doesn't get it. Clark pump fakes into your television set. See, look at the smile on his face. He knew that he did the right thing. That's the 16th foul on Rhode Island. Evans, left-handed shot, no good. Rebound by Clark. That's number eight for Clark. Well, he's very athletic. That's eight rebounds. Half of them have to be offensive boards. 16 minutes into this first half. 29-26 the score in the strip by Jones. And it'll be Duquesne ball with 22 on the shot clock. Well, Bill Clark, 5.7 rebounds already. He's one of the big reasons why Duquesne has a three-point lead. Duquesne University basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Not everyone's as forgiving as Nationwide Insurance. <laughs> That's why Nationwide Insurance offers accident forgiveness. Your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Nationwide is on your side. Breaking news. News that's happening and being revealed at this moment. Channel 11 News is breaking news coverage. Dedicated to covering stories at a moment's notice. Committed to the big stone. Channel 11 News is breaking news coverage. Taking you to the center of the action. Bringing you all the details. We want to get this on the air immediately. No time for features or fluff. No time to waste at Channel 11 News. We're breaking news coverage you can count on. Tell me about some of the stuff you've had to deal with. I just dropped out completely. A lot of my friends, they were really concerned, especially my friend Aaron. Like, you just have to find someone. They don't have to tell you advice. They don't have to do that. They just listen. Help Frank and their class of 08 to graduate at boostup.org. Life's most important lessons are best learned in the home. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Well, it's all about offense so far in this first half. Duquesne leads it by three, 29 to 26 over Rhode Island. A little under four minutes to play here in the first half. Hey, coming up at halftime, we'll give you scores and highlights from earlier 8-10 action, plus a big-time finish in the ever-going Big East Tournament. I don't know if you saw Villanova defeating Marquette earlier and an A-10 mid-tournament report. Well, Jimmy Barron so far has made three threes in this first half for Rhode Island. We've had the pleasure of watching him these last four years, and boy, the kid can flat-out shoot. Well, he just comes off of big. You see how he squares up. He always has his shoulders squared up to the basket. No matter where, where he is, whether he's coming off a pick or whether he's just a standstill jump shooter, Jimmy Barron having a great first half, three for six, nine points. Not only that, but a fantastic student, a 3.42 GPA. He's up for the Lowe's Senior Class Award, which is a great honor. Talks about character, community service, classroom work, all those things. Along with Lish and Mbala, yep. Felisau. 
an All-American, academic All-American. And right now he's on the bench as his team is down by three, 29-26. A little zone by Rhode Island once again. Rhode Island trying to slow down this Duquesne team. Shot clock at five. Evans swings it to Jackson for three. Good with the shot clock at one. He does. He cocks that shot on his, well, on his right shoulder and just fires it through. Eight points now for Aaron Jackson. Two of three from three. And Duquesne with a six-point lead. Kaheem Seawright somehow read the mind of Lamont Ulmer, who was hooked for the back of the defender to slam that one home. Some hops. That's a little athleticism right there. Well, I don't think either one of these teams is lacking in athleticism. Yeah, somebody else on Duquesne could probably do the same thing, but that was pretty. That was a pretty nice shot right there. Bill Clark with the ball. Shot clock under 20. Game clock under three. Four-point lead for Duquesne. Evans, the freshman. Clark thought about a long-range three. Balding will take the three. No good. Rebound is tipped. Offensive board for Clark and the finish. That is the sixth offensive rebound for Bill Clark. It's his ninth overall. Cothran gets his man off his feet, finds Ulmer underneath, and Ulmer gets it to go for the right hand. Right now, Ulmer is having his way underneath the basket. That's the 16th point in the paint for Rhode Island compared to 22 for Duquesne. Yeah, 16th point in the paint for Rhode Island. And Martell has six of those. And I say that because he's the seven-footer. That's the guy you expect to have points in the paint. Clark draws the foul as he'll get two free throws. Delroy James with his second personal foul. You cut in that lane. You have a guy like Evans looking for you every time. Taking the ball to the basket. Nice pass by Evans in the paint. Clark's is so athletic. He's able to do so many things. So you really want to play behind him. When you do that, if he gets the ball, at least you have a better shot of stopping him. When he gets around you on a cut or a rebound, you're in big trouble. Well, and again, he's just a sophomore. He's a sophomore. Damian Saunders is a sophomore. Melquan Balding, who's about to check out of this ball game, is a freshman. I mean, this is a young team. We just saw B.J. Montero come in. He's a freshman. Well, Greg Amodio, the athletic director, hired Ron Everhart. Painstaking measures to make sure he had the right guy. He's been here three years, and he's had, every year he's had something crazy happen. And, and Ron Everhart has just done an excellent job adapting and bringing his team where I guarantee the prognosticators never had Duquesne anywhere near where they are this year. Now they finished uh, as the number seven seed, but tied for fifth with Richmond and St. Joseph's in the standings. What did Greg uh, say early on this season when he was talking about Ron Everhart? He said low maintenance. I mean, really low maintenance. I mean, there's not many college coaches that you can say that about. Yeah, and I think that Greg enjoys that because he just wants to win. Everhart wants to win, and, and so does Amodio. They're both cut out of the same cloth. Nice move by Kaheem Seawright to pull Rhode Island within three, 35-32. Rhode Island is just making hay underneath the basket. They don't even have to shoot the ball outside the three-point line. Duquesne's got to find a remedy stopping that inside game. Here Rhode Island, three of seven from outside the arc. Duquesne, three of 11. Saunders with the drive. Can't finish with the left hand. Jones with the tip. And he'll bring the Rhode Island offense up the floor. Down by three. Cothran, 4-3. And the tie, no good. Duty battling for the rebound. To the floor they go. B.J. Montero tying it up. Along with Damian Saunders. And Saunders who had his back to the floor. And the possession goes to Rhode Island with a fresh 35. Ron Everhart, 46 years old. On the opposite side, Jim Barron, the head coach of Rhode Island. Now 54 years old. There's Jim, whose younger son, Billy, is going to play for the Rhode Island State Championship this Saturday night. He's a heck of a player in his own right. The point guard. Cothran, open up top, swings it to Marquise Jones for three, no good. Rebound by Seawright, tipped to Cothran, bank shot off the mark. And the rebound pulled down by Saunders. So under a minute to play. Does it matter for Duquesne? Nope, right to the cylinder goes Eric Evans. 
37-32 the score. Nice move by Jones. Barron open for three. Go! And Jimmy Barron makes it a two-point game. He has 12. And a timeout called by Rod Everhart. Rod Everhart knows there's a five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Now, he may go to the rack very quickly, but he wants to make sure that there is a design play. Jim Barron, meanwhile, going over defense, but he's going to go over a little offense, too. And he has watched his son, Jimmy Barron, convert on four of six three-pointers so far in this first half. And Rhode Island within two. You see Jimmy Barron averaging 13.8 points for his career. He's ninth on Rhode Island's all-time scoring list. Now he's averaging 13.8 for his career, but he's averaging just under 17 this year. And his three-point field goal percentage for the season is at 45%, 43% for the career. Don't forget, they've moved the line back this year. That doesn't matter for this kid. I mean, his range is deep. See the difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Right now, I think Duquesne is going to have dribble penetration, do what they've done all first half. Try to get some dribble penetration and kick out for a jump shot. It looks like they're content with winding it down, Steve, under 10 to get this offense rolling. Yeah, but they will get a jump shot. They'll somehow get something going to the basket. Jackson with a finger roll from five. Clark had another rebound. It's knocked out of bounds, and Duquesne with 4.1 to play. The ball went off the arm of Seawright. Clark was able to keep the action alive. There's Seawright. So Duquesne, with 4.1 to play, will keep the ball out of the hands of Rhode Island. At least it seems they will. For the final four seconds, Jackson, long range three, no good. Off the side of the rim, and that is the end of the first half. Well, it was a rather entertaining first half with each team shooting at 50% or better. In fact, each team now even at 50%. One's 14 for 28, that's Rhode Island. Duquesne, meanwhile, 16 of 32. So maybe some defensive adjustments going into the second half. Duquesne with a two-point lead, and their defense forced seven turnovers from Rhode Island in the first half. Let's check in with Steve Wolf with Rod Everhart. Here we are with Coach Everhart. Coach, you had a decent first half, but defensively inside, Rhode Island's getting a lot of easy buckets on you. Yeah, we've got to do a better job of blocking out and taking away the easy second chance points that they're getting. We've given up way too many of those. Points in the paint are killing us right now, and then obviously we're not doing a real good job getting out to the shooter because uh, Barron's really hurt us with a couple of the, the late threes predicated on their dribble drives. So we've got to shore up our perimeter defense there in the middle of the floor, and we've got to block out. What else do you do in the second half? Well, I think on our end, we got to spread it out a little bit more. we got to get better ball movement. We're getting stagnant offensively, and we're letting them guard us. Uh, we're going playing too much one-on-one -on -one in spots as opposed to reversing the ball, moving it, and getting the guys in the open floor. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Thanks to Rod Everhart as well. Lenox City is the site. It's Rhode Island and Duquesne. Quarterfinal matchup. We're at halftime, 37-35. Duquesne on top. Our halftime show coming up after these messages. Duquesne University Basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Chemical dependency can affect anyone at any time. Fortunately, there's hope. Call Greenbrier today. owner of DB Homes. Welcome to our new model home on Eisenhower Boulevard. Are you considering investing in a new home? Let DB Homes make your dream home a reality. We are an Energy Star builder and our homes can be customized to fit your needs and budget. Our company offers flexibility throughout the entire process with many owner builder options and in much less time than traditional stick built homes. We hope you'll stop by and tour our new model home. Build your home on a solid foundation with DB Homes. I am so sick and tired of fighting with my husband every time a bill collector calls. How can I pay my bills when I can barely feed my family? There is a better way of life. You and your family can live debt free. Harold Shepley & Associates is a debt relief law firm committed to helping you avoid bankruptcy or file for bankruptcy. 
Call us for a free consultation. The results could be life-changing. Take your first step to financial freedom. Give my law firm a call. After all, the only thing you have to lose is your debt. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, what looks good? Our special today is shrimp scampi. It's been sitting around for about a week. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, and you should know about it. WPXI is an equal opportunity employer and employs without regard to race, color, sex, age, religion, or national origin. studio in New York at the half between Rhode Island and Duquesne. We'll get you back down to Atlantic City for the second half in just a few minutes. But first, earlier action from the A-10 Conference Tournament. Xavier meeting St. Louis for the first time in tournament history. Musketeers 2-0 against the Phillies in the regular season, winning those games by an average of over 22 points a game. And this one wasn't close either. How about B.J. Raymond? This is why he got them to the Elite Eight last year. Big three-pointers. That was a, a four-pointer. Xavier up by 10 at the break. Then Raymond, this time it's the shot clock that's expiring, and he gets it off. Musketeers up by 14. Xavier dominating in this one. Derek Brown gets the rebound. And then finishes with the up and under. Xavier running away 66 to 47 over Rick Majerus' team. And Raymond finishing with 18 points in that one. St. Joe's against Temple. Philly rivals. Craig Williams from deep. Three trays in the first half. Owls up by 12. St. Joe's needing this one even more than Temple for NCAA tournament hopes. But Ryan Brooks hitting the three to put the Owls up by 15 at the break. And then they continue the hot hand. It's Williams again. Putting them up by 20 points, 54-34 at that point. Samaj Inge, how about a little exclamation point, yeah. Owls up by 15 there, they go on to win 79-65. It's going to be Temple against Xavier in the next round. That will be a dandy. Of course, another game still to come tonight. Richmond against Dayton. Both teams scored a little under 70 points a game. Richmond .1 under 70 points a game. They did meet this season 69-63 in favor of the Flyers, but that one was at Dayton, this one in neutral territory. And right up the coast from AC and right up the road from our studio, the Big East Tournament into quarterfinal action today at MSG. One seed Louisville, who hasn't lost the game since before Valentine's Day, facing Providence, where there's still a little piece of Rick Pitino's heart. There's also some of it at MSG, remember? Coach the Knicks. The cards got going early. Five minutes in, Samardo Samuels inside for the slam. Louisville up 12 to 5. Providence really needing this. They had that big win over Pitt. Trying to knock off another top team in the conference, but it wasn't happening as Edgar Sosa goes to Earl Clark. Then Jerry Smith with the three. Louisville up 41 to 32. Cards up double digits later on in the half. Here comes Terrence Williams, the real star of the team. But those are his first points of the game. That's what you need. Multiple scorers. How about the outlet pass by Williams? Up to Clark, who had a game high, 24. Louisville takes it 73 to 55. They're going to face the winner between Jay Wright, the coach of the year in the Big East, and Marquette. Scotty Reynolds to Dante Cunningham, who puts it home. Wildcats up by four late in the second half. Marquette, who had come all the way back from down double digits. Maurice Acker, the big three ball from the corner. Marquette's within one. Then Lazar Haywood from way beyond the arc. Marquette's first lead since it was five to four. There's the contingent. But seconds remaining as Reggie Redding goes to Dwayne Anderson underneath. And Villanova gets it at the buzzer. Anderson gets the shot off right before time expires at Madison Square Garden. You see the release, and then the backboard lights up. Villanova takes it by one. It'll be Villanova against Louisville. Over to the ACC, Vatek tipping off against Miami for the right to face North Carolina. That'll be fun. Malcolm Delaney with the turnaround jumper, giving the Hokies an 11-point lead. Then Jimmy Graham with the interception for Miami. Their football team could use more of those. Cuts the lead to five. Midway through the second half, JT Thompson with the rebound. Going all the way. Oh, but it's JT Thompson with the rebound to throw it down. Tech up by 10, and then 80 to Salo to Thompson for the dunk. And the Hokies dominate down the stretch to take it 65 
to 47. Hokies head coach Seth Greenberg hoping to join his big brother in the NCAA tournament. Brad Greenberg led Radford to the Big South Championship, punching their ticket last weekend. Of course, the A-10 still up for grabs. I'm Adam Zucker in New York, the second half of Rhode Island at Duquesne in the A-10 quarterfinals coming your way right after this break. Not everyone's as forgiving as Nationwide Insurance. <laughs> That's why Nationwide Insurance offers accident forgiveness. Your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Nationwide is on your side. Hi, I'm Walter Page. I'm about to tell you something you already know. That a better mattress leads to better sleep and a better quality of life. Before you take dramatic steps to change your sleep, consider the science that says your first consideration should be a new mattress. At Paid Bedding, you get more mattress for less money in every price range. Need a premium set? You will find savings at every comfort level. Your hometown mattress manufacturer offering the highest quality and service at the lowest price. At Paid Bedding, you really can see the difference with your eyes closed. Go ahead. You know you want one. Now is the time to buy one. And no one beats the selection at Needin' Arts Harley-Davidson. Why are we whispering? With deals this good, there's no need to shout. Needin' Arts Harley-Davidson, Not 43, Wintersville, Steubenville. Or see us on the web at NeedinArts.com. Time from Boardwalk Hall here in Atlantic City. Well, last year's Atlantic 10 championship game was a dandy. The Temple Owls against the St. Joseph's Hawks. Deontay Christmas. Well, Christmas is trying to become the only player in history of eight, the 8-10 to lead this conference in scoring for three straight years. Last year, he went off, and his three-point shooting is one of the reasons why Temple was able to walk away with a 69-64 victory. And they were one of three teams in the Atlantic 10 to make it to the NCAA tournament because of that victory. Now, they've moved on to the semifinal. They defeated St. Joseph's, so that means St. Joseph's and Temple uh, will not meet, obviously, in the final here in Atlantic City this year. But from a bubble standpoint, will the Atlantic 10 get three teams into the NCAA tournament? We'll see. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But from a standing standpoint here in, uh, in Atlantic City, Xavier and Temple already on to the semifinal. Two very different games earlier today, Steve. Well, and Xavier played really good defense uh, in the half court. That's been their Achilles heel all year long. And then Temple did an excellent job of limiting Nibbins' touches early in the game. He had good numbers, but he really was not a factor. Ahmad Nibbins, player of the year of the Atlantic 10 from St. Joseph's. And again, St. Joseph's just couldn't get more scoring together today against Temple. They only had four guys score in the ballgame. Well, and they only had four guys score because late in the game, Govins hit a couple shots. Really, they had three scores throughout the game, and there was not enough balance offensively so chalk has rung true so far here in the Atlantic 10 tournament with the number one and number four seed moving on and will there be a third team from the Atlantic 10 or even a second team in the NCAA tournament look at the bubble teams around the country Rhode Island at 22 and 9 they are truly a bubble team right now well you look at their RPI they are a bubble team I think that they have another win in them they have to get that Dayton wins tonight I cannot see them not getting in I think Z uh, Xavier's obviously in uh, you could get three teams from this conference and if Rhode Island can somehow get to the finals, 
I think they're definitely in. How about Crane with Booker Wood Fox, the player of the year in his conference? They got knocked out of their, of their own tournament. They are a very good team. Well, they're a very good team. And then you look at San Diego State out of the Mountain West. Yep. You know, they got a great team there. And, and then you're looking at, you know, Florida, who's a perennial national contender. Uh, they're in that bubble, bubble race now. So a lot of parity in college basketball right now. Well, if Rhode Island wants to get into the conversation for the NCAA tournament, they need to be in the conversation for the Atlantic 10 championship. They trail it by two. The second half is coming up from AC. Duquesne University Basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Chemical dependency can affect anyone at any time. Fortunately, there's hope. Call Greenbrier today. Hi, I'm Dick Burke, owner of DB Homes. Welcome to our new model home on Eisenhower Boulevard. Are you considering investing in a new home? Let DB Homes make your dream home a reality. We are an Energy Star builder and our homes can be customized to fit your needs and budget. Our company offers flexibility throughout the entire process with many owner-builder options and in much less time than traditional stick-built homes. We hope you'll stop by and tour our new model home. Build your home on a solid foundation with DB Homes. For that better night's sleep, there's only one place to shop and get deals like these. No need to wait one more night for that better night's sleep. Page Bedding offers quick, free in-home delivery and free removal of your old bedding on all mattress set purposes. Now we're introducing our signature line of mattress sets, Page Perfect Morning. All Page Perfect Morning sets have the industry's highest quality coils with various comfort layers that provide five distinct feels. Your hometown mattress manufacturer offering the highest quality and service at the lowest price. At Page Bedding, you really can see the difference with your eyes closed. Tell me about some of the stuff you've had to deal with. I just dropped out completely. A lot of my friends, they were really concerned, especially my friend Aaron. Like, you just have to find someone. They don't have to tell you advice. They don't have to do that. They just listen. Help Frank and their class of 08 to graduate at BoostUp.org. Today in America, nearly 13 million children live below the poverty line. Will you help? Go to PovertyUSA.org today. Some discussions in that huddle for Rhode Island. They trail it by two, 37-35. Jimmy Barrett's had a pretty good first half offensively for Rhode Island. Let's take a look at the highlights because Damian Saunders and Bill Clark, they've had a very good half for Duquesne. Damian Saunders really got him going early. You can see the nice feed from Clark. Saunders was five for six, ten points. Really making athletic drives to the basket. But his sidekick, Bill Clark, has done it. A really outstanding job, not just playing defense, but offensive rebounding. He's already got nine rebounds, six of those on the offensive glass. I think that's impressive, the fact that he's able to get inside and get those offensive rebounds. We take a look at the first half stats. Yes, that is right. Both teams at 50% from the floor. Rhode Island and Jimmy Barron, have, they have one more three than the Duquesne Dukes. Now, right now, you can tell it's a close game. You don't have all those chicks on the one side like they did last game. <laughs> <No. you know? laughs> well, so Jimmy Barron with 12 points leads the way for Rhode Island. Meanwhile, Damian Saunders leads the way for Duquesne. Aaron Jackson, though, has eight points, two rebounds, two assists. You see his numbers. He's three of seven. Do they need to get him involved more? Yeah, you know, he's been very quiet. He's, he's gotten a couple jump shots out there, but he's been quiet. I think... Rhode Island's doing a very nice job of neutralizing him. They're trying to make sure they stop that dribble drive and keeping him out of the fray. Aaron Jackson, who, as we said, is the lone scholarship senior on this squad, and it was during Rod Everhart's first year before the start of his first year. He, along with four teammates, they were involved in an on-campus, and they were innocent bystanders, an on-campus shooting at Duquesne University. He not only had to overcome that, Aaron Jackson did, but Ron Everhart. And the program had to overcome that. They lost a, a handful of players for the entire year for Duquesne. And Kieran Achara and Aaron Jackson, two players who stayed around when Ron Everhart took over. Five other players transferred, and, you know, Aaron Jackson said there was no chance he was going to transfer. Well, and initially, uh, you know, after Danny Need left, I think Aaron Jackson, did you see Clark nail on the three? Aaron Jackson uh, was not, well, he wanted to stay, but I'm not sure if Ron Everhart wanted anybody oh, to stay true. From, that, that's true. from that three win season. But you got to give credit to Aaron Jackson to sticking it out, toughing it out. 
That's the first year whenever our here is a hey, the five-man shuffle where they just oh, yeah. inserted five guys at a time. They went on to win ten games that first year, six in the Atlantic 10. Jimmy Barron fouled going up. Jackson picks up his third. Now that's a big foul early on here in the second half. It, and it is very early, and especially as aggressive as Jackson is. So early he had an offensive foul leaning in. It's an instinct. He plays hard all the time. Jimmy Barron, who is a dead-on free-throw shooter. In fact, he's at 88.9% this year, and that's a little down for him. He's normally a 90% free-throw shooter. Well, he has beautiful form, beautiful rotation, does the same thing every time he goes to the free-throw line. Well, he makes both of his free-throws there to bring Rhode Island within three, 40 to 37. Aaron Jackson bringing the defense with him. Bolding starting the second half for Duquesne. Duty for three, go! Jason Duty rolls it off the front of the rim, his second three of the night. Dribble, drive, and kick. That's how they've made their money this year. Duquesne does an excellent job of driving and kicking the ball out. Now, a lot of teams have taken Mike D'Antoni's offensive style from when he was at the Phoenix Suns and now with the New York Knicks. Duty with a two-point field goal attempt. He's fouled going up. He went into some bigger territory he'll get two free throws duquesne's up tempo style dribble drive is not really a mike d'antoni style no it's a little bit different but I, I tell you what you have to have guys that can drive and kick and as you see right here this is a great pass by bowling and a good clean foul by rhode island duty a tough kid hit, hit his head on the the best the, the back of the stanchion there this is the first free throw he's an 88 percent free throw shooter when you watch a good free throw shooter, they do the same thing every time. It's sort of like lining up a putt. You do the same thing, and you have to have good arch and good follow through. Well, he makes that one there. Largest lead of the night for Duquesne. It's a seven point margin, 44 37. Six or 18 and a half, excuse me, to play here in the second half. Martel with the handoff to Barron. Little pick and roll, Martello, nice left-handed shot. And you know what, Bowling came out on him and went for his right hand, not realizing that Martell was oh, left-handed. Clark tries to answer with a three, no good, Omer with the rebound. It was so quick, he went to the right side and forgot. Well, here's Rhode Island now, trying to draw closer, down five. Each team continues, it's good shooting here in the second half. Omer. To the basket, athletic move, no good. Gets his own rebound, stripped away as he goes up. Martell picks up the loose ball. Here's Barron, right post jumper, short. Gets his own rebound. Back-to-back -back offensive rebounds for Rhode Island. Make it three in a row as Almer picks it up off the floor. Rhode Island right now is out hustling Duquesne. Bolton did not box out. Barron was able to get that stick back. And Martell picks up the loose ball. And Will Martell with his 10th point, he is 5 of 6 from the floor. I think when you get 5 of 6 from Will Martell, you're playing uh, with house money. Well, they're, they're make, taking advantage of his height advantage, 7 feet. There's nobody anywhere near that on the Duquesne end of the bench. Will Martell, who prepped at the Hun School in Princeton, New Jersey, an outstanding not only academic institution, but also they have a pretty good basketball team as well. Saunders has the shot blocked by Martell. When he came out of Fairhaven High School, he wanted to play Division I basketball. They didn't think he was ready for it. Jimmy Barrett is ready for Division I basketball in a big way. And he ties it at 44. Right now, it's Martell all the time. Martell on the offensive end, Martell on the defensive end. He's the one that started that fast break. And it's a 7-0 run for Rhode Island. Barrett with 17 points. 16 and a half to play. Bolding. Ball tipped by Ulmer, but right into the hands of Saunders. Saunders has to bring Martell outside and then try to dribble, penetrate around him. Duty rims out. The rebound on the offensive end again, and the steal by Rhode Island. Right place, right time for Martell, and Clark steals it away. What a save. How about that hustle? Saunders, there's no numbers. Jones picks it up. He has numbers. To Barron for three, right sideline. No good. Rebound, Seawright, and he's fouled going up. Sub 
than had to give, and it finally did. The foul by Duquesne. Seawright will get two free throws. Jim Barron loves it. Game tied at 44. Duquesne University basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. When people come to Bloomberg Eye Center, they just can't wait to tell their family and friends about their experience. A few months ago, we had a gentleman come in for LASIK. Two weeks later, his twin brother came in. They both wore glasses for over 40 years. The next thing you know, his wife came in, and then his daughter. It became a regular family affair. Now, his last daughter's coming all the way from Kansas to have LASIK surgery at the Bloomberg Eye Center. And we're going to do a great job for her, too. Call Bloomberg Eye Center, 888-539-EYES. Like thousands of others, you'll see. Go ahead. You know you want one. Now is the time to buy one. And no one beats the selection at Needin Arts Harley-Davidson. Why are we whispering? With deals this good, there's no need to shout. Harley Davidson, Lot 43, Wintersville, Steubenville. Or see us on the web at NeedonGuards.com. Each year, millions of Americans get the flu. Don't be one of them. Vaccination is the best prevention, along with good hygiene practices. And if you think you have the flu, see your doctor quickly. Prescription antiviral medications can help you feel better faster if taken within 48 hours. When I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, I also learned about its serious connection with cardiovascular disease. To hear my story and learn more, visit INOWDiabetes.org. And every player from across the country, all in one place, your home. MaxPreps.com, America's source for high school sports. The CBS College Sports Network. He might take it all the way. What a hit. Knock it deep and that one is home. Now available in crystal clear HD. This season, no team is safe. See the teams making noise all season long on the CBS College Sports Network. Well, it was Will Martell's AAU coach when he was a high school ball player at Fairhaven High School in New Jersey that suggested he go to the Hunt School to prep for a year and then maybe get a Division I scholarship. I think Rhode Island's pretty happy that he did that. Yeah, he has got a feathery touch. You said that earlier. And he's really Johnny on the spot. with a nice, easy roll, but he's done it also in the defensive end. He's made it hard for the UK players to get back in transition and get any easy points in the paint. Now, out of high school, he probably could have gone to a mid-major, you know, Northeast Conference, maybe the MAC, but he wanted to play at a higher level. There were Division Three schools that were interested in him. Well, he is certainly, and nothing against Division Three basketball, but he is certainly more than a Division Three player. Well, and he had to go to the right school where he was going to get good teaching. Jim Barron is a great coach, but he's also a better teacher. You know, he's coach of the year for a lot of reasons, and recruiting's not and probably his number one thing. I think he's just a great coach and a great teacher of this game. Well, Rhode Island has wiped away a seven-point deficit, and thanks to a 9-0 run, they lead it 46-44. 15-50 in county to play second half. For the right to move on to the semifinals of the Atlantic 10 tournament with a, an automatic berth in the NCAA tournament on the line. Aaron Jackson playing with three fouls for Duquesne. I really think, Tom, that's affected him. He is not as Maybe. aggressive as he was in the first half. Here's Saunders speaking of being aggressive, and he cans the three. It's nice to know that you don't have to be Johnny on the spot every time down. Aaron Jackson really struggled the second half, but Saunders picking up where he left off in the first half. And again, we keep saying this, but Saunders a sophomore. Bill Clark a sophomore. These kids are young. There's an alley-oop attempt to Ulmer, cut off nicely by Saunders with the help of Bill Clark. Martell may have gotten in the way a little bit there, too. So Duquesne leading it by 147-46, and Clark draws the contacts. And once again, he's going to head to the free throw line, where, as a team, Duquesne has struggled tonight. Good three of eight. This is from a team that's normally a 70% free throw shooting squad. You see right now, Ulmer going for the fake, the initial fake. Clark getting right around him and able to drive straight to the basket. What they're doing is they're spreading out the Rhode Island defense and opening the lanes. Duquesne is at its best when they can get to the rim on the dribble. A foul, by the way, Steve, the first on Ulmer. And Clark, who had a little trouble in the first half with his free throws, missed a couple. Now three of five. There's Ulmer. 
who wasn't starting earlier this season, but in the Richmond game a few weeks ago, made the start for Rhode Island, who hasn't left the starting lineup since. Well, they play so well with him. He is very athletic. Oh, he's unbelievably and, athletic. And, and he also, he can also shoot that mid-range jump shot. 49-46 the score. There have been eight lead changes in this game. And the way things are rolling, that probably is not going to be the last lead change. Here's Barron, who he was open for a moment. I always catch my breath when I see him have a step on his defender because the shot clock now down to 10. As we said, he can shoot it from anywhere. Look how deep he is there, and he splashes it home. Oh, boy. You know what? That was right in our line of fire. And I it, love it. It is beautiful. It's a thing of beauty when he shoots that long-range jump shot. Here's Duty. Thought about the answer from three. Instead, the drive, and Seawright says, uh-uh. Kahim Seawright, kid from Uniondale, New York, who lost his mom at the end of last year. And he is a fine player. Well, he's playing against the quicker Jason Duty, and you can see at 6'8", Seawright is athletic in his own right, taking the ball and swatting it away. Seawright now out on Bill Clark. Shot clock heading toward 10 for the Dukes. Game clock under 14. Jones swipes it away from Jackson. And Clark again initiating the contact, draws the foul. It's on the floor. And it's going to go against Kahim Seawright. I mentioned that Seawright last year, tough year for him. I thought he really blossomed as a basketball player for Jim Barron. Lost his mom at the end of the year, and that was difficult for him. His mom was at every one of his games, or tried to make it to every one of his games. And, you know, he has responded with a fantastic senior year for Rhode Island. Well, you hate to hear that, especially at that young age. You're trying to, you know, Find your way, especially when you're on the road. You're trying to do st school work. Yep. But you're right. He has become a very good basketball player and one of the big leaders on this team. A foul, by the way, that Clark drew was called on Keith Cothran. So Clark again will head to the free throw line. He's four of six in this game. 49-49. And he gets a nice, friendly boardwalk call roll off the front of that rim. You see Clark, he just shoots it off those fingertips. It almost looks like it's staying on his fingertips as he shoots it. Nice rotation. Maybe a little too much rotation there. And, and the, the broadcasting jinx. Now <laughs> <laughs> Duquesne leads it by one. 13.40 to play here in the second half. Duty on Marquise Jones. Now Jimmy Barron. Barron with 20 points in this ball game. He's open for a moment, lets it go. It's an air ball. Doesn't happen often. But he was not, his feet were not set, and Jason Duty came flying at him. I don't think he saw Duty coming off that pick. Duty came around very quickly and got a hand up, sort of startled Jimmy Barron. And you're right, you don't see that air ball. No. You, better, you better take a picture of that one. Duty's going to check out of this ball game. Eric Evans, who has the ball in his hands at midcourt, checks back in for Duquesne. Damian Saunders covered by Martell. Martell's going to keep slipping back into the paint. Seven-footer doesn't want to be out that far. Nice find by Clark. Has Jackson. Tough pass inside, and it's out of bounds and remains with Duquesne. What Duquesne will do when Martell is playing against Saunders is they'll Duquesne will pull him out. The Saunders can shoot that jump shot, and as soon as Martell comes out, he'll go right there. There's Martell with his 12th point of the night. Martell can, cannot guard him out deep. And Saunders is just too quick getting to the rim. Yeah, I gave that bucket to Martell. It's Saunders' point, and it's his 15th. They both have been doing a pretty good job offensively. I know how much you like offense there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was no defense on that last play. No, I guess no. there really wasn't. <laughs> I couldn't imagine playing defense out there if I was seven foot. Nice defensive stand right there by Saunders, blocking that shot away. Duquesne in transition. Evans, a little head fake, draws the defense. I think Evans had every intention of settling back and maybe firing a three over Seawright instead. Like a quarterback, he tries to lead Clark to the baseline, and he let him a little bit too much. Well, Clark was calling for the basketball. He had a good box down low where he was able to seal Jimmy Barron away, but this was a bad pass by Evans. And a turnover. 
Whenever you get Clark down low against somebody his own size, you really need to get the ball to him because he's very athletic. He can just raise up over top and very strong. At a Redondo Beach, California. Went to Worcester Academy as a prep after going to Oak Hill Academy. Here's Delroy James. What a pretty move that was. And Seawright is fouled going up, so Seawright is going to get a couple of shots. So back and forth we go. Duquesne hanging on to a three-point lead. 11.54 to play. That guy's going to shoot some free throws when we come back. Duquesne University basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. When people come to Bloomberg Eye Center, they just can't wait to tell their family and friends about their experience. A few months ago, we had a gentleman come in for LASIK. Two weeks later, his twin brother came in. They both wore glasses for over 40 years. The next thing you know, his wife came in, and then his daughter. It became a regular family affair. Now, his last daughter's coming all the way from Kansas to have LASIK surgery at the Bloomberg Eye Center. And we're going to do a great job for her, too. Call Bloomberg Eye Center, 888-539-EYES. Like thousands of others, you'll see. Go ahead. You know you want one. Now is the time to buy one. And no one beats the selection at Needing Arts Harley Davidson. Why are we whispering? With deals this good, there's no need to shout. Needing Arts Harley Davidson, Lot 43, Wintersville, Steubenville. Or see us on the web at NeedingArts.com. Each year, millions of Americans get the flu. Don't be one of them. Vaccination is the best prevention, along with good hygiene practices. And if you think you have the flu, see your doctor quickly. Prescription antiviral medications can help you feel better faster if taken within 48 hours. When I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, I also learned about its serious connection with cardiovascular disease. To hear my story and learn more, visit INOWDIABETES.ORG. Well, it's not often in the media guide of a respective college that an assistant coach has a, a, a piece in it where it says prominent players coach. That's Bill Barton, who came to Duquesne after being the head coach at Notre Dame Prep, a very successful high school program. And you see he's the associate head coach. And he coached Michael Beasley, as we mentioned before, but he also coached Lamont Ulmer from Rhode Island. So he's getting a chance to see one of his uh, pupils on the college level. And he also coached Damian Saunders from Duquesne. That's a heck of a program. I mean, they were the number one team in the country during one of his seasons, but also one of the top five teams for a number of years. You know, you know Tom, he has sent 70 players to Division I with scholarships. Yep. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of savings for a lot of parents. So Bill Barton getting a chance to coach on the college level with Rod Everhart, Kaheem Seawright, to the free throw line, and that's not a feather, just so you know, and that headband that Seawright is wearing, that's his mouthpiece. So he's like a quarterback in between plays. The mouthpiece goes into the headband like the quarterback puts it into the face mask. I just hope he doesn't forget that it's there. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Second shot for Seawright to always, make it a one-point game. I always wonder, if you, why do you have to take it out of your mouth? I was thinking the same thing. In football, I never understood that. A quarterback, yes. I always see tight ends and running backs do the same thing. By the way, that's 10 rebounds for Clark off that miss. And that is an unforced turnover by Duquesne. At that time, Clark was looking away, holding, throwing the ball where Clark was, but Clark was not looking. See what Rhode Island has done tonight. Baron Martell, that duo, has accounted for 30 points. The rest of the team has accounted for just 20. Seawright has eight of those 20. Here's Seawright in the paint. Right into a double team, maybe even a triple team. Baron gets some separation, some room. It's good! Count it, and the foul. It's going to be a four-point opportunity. You think this kid wants to go to the big dance? The senior... The coach's son, Jimmy Barron, squaring up, hitting that three-point jump shot. And you'll see the nice inside-out play. Seawright throwing it back out after the double team. Gets Jimmy Barron open. It's effortless. 23 points on 7 for 11 shooting. The coach's son. The keys were always his to go into the gym and shoot whatever his dad had practiced. I know you play, you know, you're the, the son of a, of a coach. And were the keys always there for you to go in and practice? They were always there and the encouragement and, you know, it's, uh, you got to give Jimmy Barron all the credit in the world because he's made himself into a great shooter and a very, very good college basketball player. 
first team all A-10, and it's because of his hard work in that gym. Evans gets a friendly roll off the front of the rim. 55-53, seven lead changes now in this ball game. Delroy James thought about answering separation and the pretty jumper. That's a two-point field goal, and that was a pretty impressive touch right there. You know, for a big guy, he's got a very, very quick first step. Clark could not even get over there and take the charge. Nice move by the sixth man of the year in the A-10, Delroy James. Bolding in the paint. Got some control. Couldn't get the finish. Barron with the tip from his teammate, Delroy James. 55 all. Marquise Jones draws the defense. Barron way downtown off the front of the rim. And he kind of lift up because you don't think anything's going to be off the mark when he makes a few in a row. Well, especially he couldn't even see over Saunders. Nice extra pass in the finish for Saunders. 17 for Saunders on 8 of 10 shooting. And what an answer right there. Cochran was open. And we're tied at 57. You know, it's like a tennis match. One side to the other. As soon as Rhode Island scores... The Dukes come back and answer, and then Rhode Island goes down the other end. Uh, we talked about defense in the first half. How do you think the defense has been here? And I know where, what the numbers are, but how do you think the defense has been here? Well, actually, I was talking about defense. You were talking about Oh, offense. yeah, that's right. But, but I think that they've done a really nice job, Rhode Island has, on containing Jackson. Jackson has done nothing here in the second half. Until there, with five on the shot clock, there's that analyst jinx again. Well, they need to get him in the game, and, you know, you can win games some games without him, but you're not going to win this Rhode Island game without Aaron Jackson doing something. That's his first points in the second half. Whistle blows and a foul. Called by D.J. Karstensen. That foul's going to go against Damian Saunders. That's his second. There's Aaron Jackson. You know, we talked about defense. I think Duquesne is doing a pretty decent job of not allowing easy inside baskets, but they're not extending on Barron, and Barron and Cothran have hit their last couple shots. Got to make sure you get a hand in their face. Well, Jimmy Barrett will take a seat with 23 points. Seven for 12 from three. Delroy James from 16. A little too long. Montero with the rebound. Jackson in the open floor. He doesn't have numbers, but he still draws the defense. Good help defense by Rhode Island. Evans for three. Uh-oh. He saw that as soon as he left his hands. He didn't think so. He was going back to play a little defense. Jackson for three. A good rebound by Seawright from the weak side. Eight rebounds for Seawright and back-to-back -back buckets now for Cochran. How about a lot of little transition with Martell out of the game? This Rhode Island team can get it up and down the court, and that's exactly what they did, beating Duquesne at their own game. Last time these two teams met, it was a 73-71 game. Jackson took over in that game. He makes the tough shot there to give Duquesne a three-point lead here. He took over and brought Duquesne back within reach after Rhode Island was down. They came back. Cothran, a 20-point performance. Seawright, a 20-point performance. Homer did not score 20 in that game. Try to get a bucket there. So Duquesne settles things down with a three-point lead under eight minutes to play. Right now, the 740 mark, Jackson has made it through most of this half with only three fouls. He's got to take over here for Duquesne and be aggressive. Well, take it over is draw the defense addition. He's doing just that right there. That's exactly what the doctor ordered for Duquesne. Nice dribble drive again. And Jackson's starting to get a little bit more aggressive. That's 20 points now for Saunders on 9 of 11 shooting. That wasn't the easiest shot either. Cothran, three in a row. And that wasn't the easiest shot either on that one. Montero came right out and Cothran was right in his face. Eight points for Cothran. Six in the second half. Jackson with a nice spin move and a right-handed finish. That's a playground move, and that is a very good playground move. He is now taken over for Duquesne. The ball is going to be in his hands for the next 6.48. Good catch by Seawright and a foul against Duquesne. 6.46 to play here in the second half. Seawright's going to get a couple of free throws with his team down by six. Welcome to LeCom, a place where students acquire the confidence to confront some of life's toughest challenges. 
teachers offer not just words, but a world of experience, where success comes only after sacrifice. A place where graduates go on to shape the next generation of medicine. Lecom, prepare yourself. Hi, I'm Dick Burke, owner of DB Homes. Welcome to our new model home on Eisenhower Boulevard. Are you considering investing in a new home? Let DB Homes make your dream home a reality. We are an Energy Star builder and our homes can be customized to fit your needs and budget. Our company offers flexibility throughout the entire process with many owner builder options and in much less time than traditional stick built homes. We hope you'll stop by and tour our new model home. Build your home on a solid foundation with DB Homes. CNBC on WPXI.com. From the coolest parties to the hottest events to what's happening at Mellon Arena. CNBC is your ticket to Pittsburgh Entertainment. Check out great local high school musical moments. Plus, our pet contests are a hit. CNBC on WPXI.com. Meet the Diner Ladies, Wendy from the Hot Metal Diner, Kelly from Kelly O's, Penny from Tom's Diner, and Donna from Cole Cafe. Great food, great fun. Visit a Diner Lady in your neighborhood. Well, the Rhode Island band try to help their team get back into this ball game. 67-61 the score. If they can't help, well, Jimmy Barron certainly can help. Well, Jimmy Barron with his 20th 5-plus 3-point game of this year. He can nail it, and he has really taken over for Rhode Island. You see him just scoot back. He's so deep with some of these shots, and he's covered, too, with a lot of these shots. Yeah, he's on radar. He just knows where the basket's going to be. Well, Jimmy Barron, 7 of 12 from outside the arc, 23 points. How about Aaron Jackson for Duquesne? He's come to life, Steve, not only in the second half, but really in the last five minutes offensively. Well, and then these statistics are a little bit skewed because Jackson, when he has his ball, the ball in his hand, he does so many things. He may create an open shot just by his dribble penetration, throw it to somebody who makes another pass, but Jackson clearly has been aggressive, like you said, in the last couple minutes. So Jackson will stand in the lane while Kahim Seawright, who has eight points and eight rebounds, visits the free throw line for two. And he misses the first. Well, the two teams came into this ball game very good free throw shooters, both around 70 percent. Now Rhode Island's eight of 12 in this game. That's about 67 percent. Meanwhile, Duquesne is 6 of 12, which is at 50%. This could be a little different game if Duquesne had made a couple more free throws. Well, and depending on the momentum, this is a close enough game that free throws are going to really yep. be a big deal here as the clock grinds down. Now, speaking of that, Duquesne with 16 fouls, Rhode Island with 14 fouls. We say that because we're kind of in that area of the ball game where that's going to be important. Evans, he is not afraid to shoot. And Cothran runs out the rebound. That's his fourth. Cothran with eight points, six in this half. Seawright isolated down low against Saunders. Seawright, oh, it looked like Saunders may have got a piece of that one. Whistle blows and a foul called against the Dukes. I believe that's going to go against B.J. Montero. And for Montero, that's his first. Now, Montero is just a freshman. I mean, some of the guys that Rod Everhart has brought in, I mean, they're athletic, they're fast, they're long. They kind of fit this up-tempo style. You know, banging around the ball, along the perimeter, getting their hands out. Rod Everhart, who has coached at McNeese State and Northeastern, front end of the one-and-one one for Ulmer is good. And at both of those places, it was the same story as what he's done at Duquesne. Rough first year, solid second year, and then it then built from there. Well, he had a rough first year, but not anywhere near as rough as everybody in this league thought it was going to be. I agree. It's going to be a foul on Bill Clark. Ron Everhart didn't like that one. That's the fourth on Clark. And with 6.13 to play, he's got to be careful. Now, Jackson's played with three for most of the second half, but Clark is a little younger than Aaron Jackson. Well, and I think that the way that Duquesne plays, they are so aggressive that you don't want to take any of that away. And when you do have three or four fouls. a very fouls, good point. Aaron Jackson, at the beginning of the second half, really, when he got his third foul, backed away. Stopped having dribble penetration. And you can't have that from Clark with four fouls. He's got to play smart, but he's got to be aggressive. Seawright makes the front end of the one-and-one. 
He is now six of nine from the line. He's a rebound away from a double double. And he makes the second shot. So seven of ten. They remember to put his mouthpiece back in. It's a two point ball game. Duquesne leads it by two. As we are hovering right around the six minute mark here in the second half. Evans to Clark. Montero, nice crossover, good defense by James just to get him away from the basket, but he's called for the foul. That was a great crossover. You talk about how athletic these guys are. Montero just getting quick to the basket, and that is a third foul on James. You'll see this right here, the nice high quick crossover. And James, really a smart defensive play, used his body to push him out as opposed to his hand, but the referee still called it. Delroy James out of Brooklyn, New York. B.J. Montero out of Waterbury, Connecticut. This is the first free throw. Duquesne now 6 of 13 from the line. B.J. Montero, and you know, I look at high school numbers every once in a while, Steve, and I say, all right, you know, that's pretty good. It's high school, though. How about 96 and 7 was his team's combined record during his four years? It's like the Celtics, for goodness sake. Holy cow. <laughs> But more importantly now is that he missed those two free throws and Duquesne is 6 of 14 from three. Delroy James, or from the free throw line I should say. Delroy James from three, no good, but he gets his own rebound. Barrett, a better shooter from three, a little short. Ulmer with the rebound. And it's stolen away by Saunders, picked up by Seawright, and then grabbed out of bounds by Jeff Clark, the referee. Duquesne went back in the zone defense, and in the zone you have to box out in an area. You'll see here, long shots. Long rebounds, and Ulmer, the real good athleticism, getting it, not able to stick it back. But Duquesne in this zone, they got to find somebody to box out. Well, they slip back into a man-to-man -man with a little help. Cothran off that help, rolls it around the rim, and he's tied it at 67. Ten points for Cothran, eight in this half, and you could say eight in the last seven minutes. He's been their go-to guy. It's been Barron and Cothran. It's our 12th tie. Again, Cochran with 20 points against Duquesne earlier this year. Under five minutes left to play for a chance to go to the semifinals of the Atlantic 10 tournament. You know, Tom, at that last time out, it was a six-point lead for Duquesne. We were talking about free throw shooting. Rhode Island has taken the win out of Duquesne's sails. On a 6-0 run. Well, and with this style, you know, I know you've seen this this year. I've seen it this year with Duquesne. They could be up eight, then down six, then up 15, then down 12 in a blink of an eye. Yeah, and I think this guy with the ball in his hands has to take control. Aaron Jackson, the leader for this Duquesne squad, draws the defense. Evans wide open for three, no good. Montero, though, with the putback and the foul. Another offensive rebound for the Dukes. The foul is on Seawright, and that's his second. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why Duquesne has the lead offensive rebound. Well, you'll see Jackson again demonstrating the leadership, getting in the lane, drawing the double team, kicking it back for the open jump shot, and Montero getting the stick back. But he has missed his last three free throws. Yeah, Montero misses there. He's 0 for 3. The team 6 of 15. That's less than 40%, folks. Cothran for 3. No good. And Jackson saves it, and Montero knocks it out of bounds. Didn't he? He fell off the back a little of a Rhode Island player. That's what the officials are saying. They, they agree with you. Jim Barron, I think, agrees with me. I'll tell you what. Duquesne, when they're in that zone, they have no idea where the Rhode Island players are, and they're not able to box out. And that is, right now, a problem, I think, for Duquesne. 69-67, a two-point ball game. We head to the four-minute mark here in the second half. A steal by James, leading the break. With a nice slice and a finish. I kept wondering if he was going to pass it out. For a big guy, he is so quick. And that first dribble, he just went straight to the defense. He went to that defense like a warm knife through butter. That's six points now for Delroy James. Mr. Junior. We are in the same neighborhood as the last game. Clark for three, and it's good. What a great game. 
points. 72, 69. It's like a boxing match. 17 points for Clark. He's a 40% shooter from three. Conference had a good second half of the second half. He finds Ulmer who can't finish, and the ball's knocked out of bounds by Montero. Three minutes and 12 seconds to play here in the second half. Duquesne hanging on to a three-point lead. It was James with the finish under the cylinder, and then it was Clark with the finish way away from the cylinder. This has been everything and more that people anticipated. Duquesne leads it by three, 72 to 60 to 69. The A-10 Men's Basketball Championship continues this week from right here in Atlantic City. If you don't have your tickets yet, go to the boardwalk call ticket office or call Ticketmaster and be sure to visit AtlanticCityNJ.com for all the latest information about tickets, discounts, and the fan zone. That's AtlanticCityNJ.com. They have been a great host once again of the Atlantic 10 Championship. And some of the news and notes around college basketball from just today. How about the Baylor victory over Kansas by seven? Villanova, a stunner over Marquette just because of the way it finished. And Clemson going down against Georgia Tech. Well, and you got the battle for the NIT with the SEC, Kentucky beating Old Miss. Yep. You know, a lot of folks that think that Kentucky should be shoved into the NCAA tournament. You'd love to see Meeks on a national stage, but you know, I think that they... Uh, they are a little short. Yeah, Meeks and Patterson are so very good, but they really don't have a third score down there. Delroy James trying to become a scorer there with a three, a little long, but Ulmer with the rebound. And a hand-checking foul called against Duquesne. Let's see who that's against. Is it against Montero or Clark? I think it's going to be against Montero. Montero. Clark has four. That's his second, second one on Montero. There you see him there. And Cothran will head to the free throw line. Rhode Island, 70.6% from the line as a team. Duquesne, 40%. And the front end of the one and one, no good. But James gets the rebound and a jump ball, and the possession remains with Rhode Island. Vital, I just don't understand how you can let a team on a free throw have two white jerseys get that that rebound yeah they're both battling for, with each other you got to box out you've got to make sure right now duquesne is having problems because of their poor fundamentals but their defense is still there and clark draws the foul as he goes up hitting the head by lamont homer that was good defense right there to steal that ball on the inbounds because it should have been a clean bucket for rhode island so well, rhode island's doing a great job of being strong going to the basket and you'll see that was the 19th offensive rebound for Rhode Island, but that was great hustle by Jackson getting it to Clark. These guys are very athletic, and they get to the rim. All right, now I, I know sometimes it's overstated, but Duquesne really needs to bear down from the free throw line here. That make means they're 7 of 16. It inches their lead farther away from Rhode Island, 73-69. But, you know, 7 of 16 is not very good. Well, it, it, when we've talked about it before. When one guy starts missing, it starts becoming contagious, and especially this la these latter parts of the game. You have to make sure you knock down free throws. Now, Duquesne showing zone, but they're playing man. 
Matchup zone. They're switching on the top. Or is it a box and one? A yep. little bit of a matchup. Yeah, if it is a box and one, it's Evans on Barrett, but it's Seawright who slips his way to the basket for the two-handed slam. 74-71, two and a half to play. Seawright, 13 points, 11 rebounds for Rhode Island. Jackson running the point, running to the basket, draws the contacts. Cothran called for the foul, and Aaron Jackson will head to the free throw line. You know, Jackson's so quick, getting around the defender, but you know what? He almost had a chance to make that and have an and one. You'll see him getting around Cothran and going up strong. He still had enough presence of mind to try to make that shot. That's where his strength, his upper body strength, comes into play. Jackson's first free throw is good. He rolls it off the front of the rim. The last time Duquesne made it to the semis in the Atlantic 10 tournament was back in 1994. Jackson makes his second one. It's a five-point lead for the Dukes. Marquise Jones checks in. Jimmy Barron, or excuse me, Lamont Ulmer checks out. Duquesne now picking up in a man-to-man. -man. As we head toward the two-minute mark here in the second half. Cothran swings it to Barron, covered by Jackson. Two all-league players matching up against each other. Here's Jones. Oh, he bobbled it right out of bounds. Hit off his palm and popped out of bounds. Well, that was great help out in the trap by Clark coming over and making C right throw the ball just a little bit harder. Jones not able to control it. Right now, Duquesne putting the, hand, the ball in the hands of their senior playmaker, Jackson. Everything's going to go through the first team all A-10 performer. Mod Nivens won the Player of the Year award, but Jackson and Deontay Christmas, Jimmy Barron, they were in the mix as well. Jackson with a crossover, backdoor pass and a tough one, cut off by Seawright. Seawright did a nice job staying with that play. Here's Cothran. No need to rush. You need to get a good shot. Go inside, outside. Quick move by Seawright. Tough reversal. Hit the rim, and Clark pulls down the rebound. His 12th. 19 points, 12 rebounds for Bill Clark. Boy, when Seawright took it in there, Barron was wide open on the opposite side of the court. Jimmy Barrett heads off the floor as Duquesne calls the timeout. His squad is down by five. Will he have anything to do with the rest of the game? I'm sure he will. Duquesne University Basketball is sponsored by Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Not everyone's as forgiving as Nationwide Insurance. <laughs> That's why Nationwide Insurance offers accident forgiveness. Your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Nationwide is on your side. Everything is gone. Everything is just gone. It'll be okay. Everything will be okay. But everything's gone. What are Mom and Dad going to do? Disasters like this can be scary. And when they happen to you and your family, Mahalkas can be there to help. We offer 24-hour emergency service with fire and water restoration. We are there to help you in the time of need. I'm Deborah Norville. If you know a veteran who seems angry or sad or isolated, you may be seeing warning signs of depression or suicide. The VA is ready to help. Call 1-800-273-TALK and press 1. If you're the parent of an adolescent or college student, learn about meningococcal meningitis and vaccination. Don't wait. Vaccinate. See our game reset. Timeouts are not an issue for either team. The issue for Rhode Island is that they're down by 5, 76-71 with 1-11 to play here in the second half. Each team with nine fouls. Now Duquesne 
This is their A-10 tournament history. Just one championship. It was way back in 77 when they defeated Villanova by three in Philadelphia. They've been in the finals just twice. They haven't been to the semis, and the winner of this goes to the semis since 1994. They've lost in the first round the last two years. Didn't even qualify in 2006. Well, and that 77 was the Eastern 8. That wasn't even the 8. That's the old A-10 with Norm Nixon and company. Norm Nixon, boy, he was a heck of a player for Duquesne. You know, right now, Rhode Island has to play good, solid defense, but they got to get their leader, Jimmy Barron, involved in the game. His last field goal came at the 11-20 mark here in the second half. He was on fire. They just sort of went away from him. Yeah, think about that, folks. He has 23 points, and it's been over 10 minutes since his last bucket. Jackson up top with the shot clock winding down toward 10 and the game clock toward a minute and under a minute, and Jackson calls a timeout. Smart play by Jackson. 12 seconds. They need to get a good shot. As far as Rhode Island is concerned, they did everything they were supposed to do defensively. So what is Jim Barron? tell his squad right now in the huddle there's a lot of time left they have enough timeouts they got to come down after they get a good defensive stop and get a nice play go inside to see right maybe kick it back out if he doesn't have it but it's got to be a two-man game if Jones is in the game some good fit dribble penetration drive and kick Jimmy Barron has to be the focal point right now you've got to look for your leading score and your senior Jimmy Barron with 23 points 7 of 13 from outside the arc Talked about Rhode Island being on the bubble for the NCAA tournament. A loss here would knock them out of that discussion. Bill Clark, he's played well tonight with 19 points and 12 rebounds. He's looking inbound to Aaron Jackson. You don't need to foul. Shot clock under 10. Jackson nearly lost it. It's at 5. Evans draws the foul. A blocking foul called against Cothran. With four seconds left on the shot clock. You really didn't need that foul. You see Cothran, not able to make it over quick enough. And he's going to get the blocking foul. And that's one of those deals where with Evans going in there, and you have Ulmer and you have Seawright in the lane, you might be able to get enough help, but you don't give up the blocking foul. Well, Duquesne, Steve, has made its last three free throw. Okay. Well, it had made its last three free throws. Is that the uh, broadcaster's jinx again? Not me this time. <laughs> but 10 of 20 now from the line, 50%. This is Evans' first trip to the line. Trying to get his 10th point, and he cannot. We're now 10 of 21 from the line. Those are two big misses. Here's Barron under a minute to play. Seawright to Cothran. Good pick and roll. And a foul on the floor. And that's going to go against the Dukes. And Aaron Jackson and Seawright to the floor. I think he knocked knees with Jackson only because Jackson's limping as well. And he's holding that, that left knee. Unless he got a cramp. By the way, that foul on Jackson, his fourth. And let's see where the contact was on this drive by Seawright. Nice job getting the ball in. A little give and go. And yes, they did. They did. They knock knees. Knock knees. So four fouls on Aaron Jackson. Four fouls on Bill Clark. And C. Wright being tended to by Jim Barron. Jim Barron's looking at him saying right now, okay, can you play? <laughs> this is a big, big game. He's, you think you can play, big fella? He's saying, you know what, you're a 68% free throw shooter looking down the line. I'm not sure who I could put in for you, although you could put Ben Eves in. He's at 77%. See Jim Barron talking now with Jeff Clark. I wonder what the discussion is about. You think it's about whether they could put somebody in for him? I mean, I know I might be reaching here. I, I don't really know what they'd be talking about. That may well be because Seawright is still limping. And it's nothing about whether it's a two-shot foul because both teams have 10 team fouls. That's what it is, I think. Here comes Mejia, and he's going to check in for Seawright, and he's going to take the free throws. Now, Mejia is a 68% free throw shooter, but he's only got 19 attempts on the year. So he's to the line for two. And the first, she's no good. That was badly missed, and I'm not sure if because they stopped play, 
did see right here to come out of the game. Oh, you think that might have been it? The official said he had to come out? Uh -uh, that's what I'm thinking. Second shot, no good. Whoa, rebound by Ulmer. Can't get the foot back, and the ball pinballs out of bounds. It will remain Rhode Island possession. I'll tell you what, if Rhode Island wins this game, it'll be because of their offensive rebounding. They have gone to the offensive glass very, very strong this evening. Whereas Duquesne did it in the first half, Rhode Island's doing it more here in the second half. Barron for three. Tough shot, and it's good. With one leg, he kicked the other leg out. And he nails the three, his eighth of the game, and a timeout for Rhode Island. We've said it all game long. You've got to look for senior leadership. And you see Barron with a man in his face. And that is just a great jump shot. Beautiful three-pointer. And it's big. Well, we talked about how important this ball game is for Rhode Island. They want to get to the semis. But they are on the bubble for the NCAA tournament. You see their RBI at 65. Strength of schedule, 135. That's not great, obviously. But they are in the conversation. At least you would think they are in the conversation. Well, and right now you see Arizona. They are out. They lost this evening or this afternoon to Arizona State. Well, that's a good point. So they're out. So that's a spot right there. One spot moving up, but they have to complete the deal today. They got to finish some business. See the reset. Possession arrow goes to Duquesne. Two fouls or two timeouts for Duquesne. Three for Rhode Island. Jimmy Barron with that three ties an 8-10 eight, eight, tournament record with eight threes. Monty Mack held the old record and a timeout by Jason Duty with Duquesne leading it by two, 76-74. You know, that last out-of-bounds play, Duty taking the ball out of bounds, and what Rhode Island is doing is they're not guarding the inbounds passer. They're guarding the guard that's coming back. So Duquesne has got to have some relief help coming over there. Got to make sure you get that pass in. All right, now, if you're Rhode Island, do you try defensively to force a turnover? Is there a point where you need to foul? No, I think right now, Duquesne, the way they play, they're going to try to come down and score. You know, they're going to move the ball around. I, I think that if you can't steal it early, you still it's only a two-point game. There's no need to foul. You may have to foul later in the shot clock, but see if Duquesne will make the turnover, make a mistake. Nice catch by Jackson, finds duty. Gets across the divisional line, and he's fouled from behind by Jim Barron. That's the third on Jimmy Barron. So Duty will head to the free throw line for two. Duty's one for two from the free throw line. Again, the team, I, I mean, this game really could be over with because Duquesne is 10 of 21 from the free throw line. Well, but they're, they're fouling a guy who is the leading free throw shooter on the team at almost 89%. But, you know, if he misses one here, it's still a one-possession game. There's lots of time left. Plus, you have the best three-point shooter. I mean, arguably the best three-point shooter. Really, he is in the Atlantic 10 and one of the best in the nation. For the minutes he plays, he is definitely one of the best three-point shooters in, the, in college basketball. Two big free throws for Duty. He checks out. Montero, you see there, back in. 78-74 the score. 25 seconds to play. Duquesne trying to hang on and advance to the 8-10 semifinals. Jones to Barron. Fade away three. No good. Rebound by Seawright, and he dribbled it out of bounds, and it was last touch by Duquesne. Well, they got to get a quick score and then get a timeout to set up their defense. Rhode Island with three timeouts left. The inbound to Seawright, the handoff to Barron. He's really trying to find some openings. He does. Gets the three off. No good. Ball knocked out of bounds. And it will off of Clark. Oh, they're going to say it's Rhode Island ball. 5.1 to play. See, I think you've got a whole lot of time. You still, you still can get a two. Now it's a little bit tougher, but it's still two possessions. Got to stretch this game here if you're Rhode Island. The inbound to Barron. Fires a three. No good. Rebound for Clark. And Duquesne, for the first time since 2004, or excuse me, 1994, will head to the semifinals of the Atlantic 10 tournament. And they will do so on the shoulders of some youngsters. Bill Clark with 19 points. Saunders with 20 points. Two sophomores really stepped into the spotlight tonight for the Dukes. But really, I think it was Aaron Jackson getting really physical the last five minutes of the game. He got that early third foul, early in the second half. Did not play very aggressive, 
into the latter part of the second half. This last five minutes, he took over the game. What a job by Ron Everhart. He has gotten his team with Aaron Jackson to the semifinals. 78-74 the final. We'll be back after these messages. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich.